uh, okay, so coupled here, uh, go away. And uh, spatial discretizations, you can read all about all of these in, in the help. But uh, basically what I like to do is I like to use the first order upwind for momentum, turbulence, kinetic energy and dissipation rate in the first 100 iterations. Uh, because um, these are less accurate, but they converge much easier. So your, your solution will not fall apart at the start wh when it's uh, forming all of the flows around the body. And then after uh, it, it kind of uh, levels out, all of the convergence monitors and uh, those things, then I would switch to second order upwind, all of these three, and then continue on, okay? And this will, uh, then our values will have a little bit of a jump and it will start uh, getting more accurate, uh, accurate results. So first order upwind for the start. Basically this will enable us to to jump through the initial phase where it will start with a coefficient of drag of about uh, three or four and then it would go up down to 0 0.5 or something like that and then it would start leveling out and that's the moment where you would want to switch to second order and then let it drop to 0 0.3 and then converge from 0 0.3 to 0 0.285 or whatever our solution may be okay uh, at solution controls uh, you can you have the current number and some relaxation factors and under relaxation factors. You can read all of that for yourself. I'll be including some more PDFs um, in, the, in the video description, uh, but basically for uh, highly skewed meshes in, in, in ANSYS Advantage magazine, I think they recommended a current number of about 50, which is good for our tetrahedral uh, mesh, which has uh, some skewed cells and the explicit relaxation factors of 0 0.5 or below. And I like to use 0 0.25. So both of these to 0 0.25. And the turbulent viscosity, I drop this to about 0 0.8. All of these uh, can be read about and I will include everything. And then when switching to second order upwind, I increase this one to 0 0.95. And that's about it. Uh, one thing more is under limits. I like to um, uh, increase this maximum turbulent viscosity ratio uh, by two zeros only to only to avoid a certain uh, possibility of, of a warning message after each iterations that maximum turbulent viscosity ratio was limited to um, 100,000 in a certain number of cells. It does not affect the solution in any way uh, but it just uh, gets ri rid of that message. You can leave this as default for the start. If you start having that message of of the, the limit of blah, 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 then you can increase it. It only gets rid of, rid of the message. And that's okay. Next thing you would go is monitors. Uh, residuals are basically the first graph that, uh, that you will be seeing in Fluent. And it's uh, it's what's left of the... Of the s of of the solved equations that Fluent is actually doing. So it will be doing um, partial differential equations uh, for Navier-Stokes Navier and there will be residuals for, let's say, it will be, uh, there will be, will be a continuity residual, which is basically uh, whatever is entering through the velocity inlet and exiting through the pressure outlet. Uh, first minus the other will be the continuity residual. And you want this to drop below, let's say, uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 or minus 4. That would be kind of an engineering solution. So it would be considered accurate enough. Uh, basically, all of these um, have, uh, have a criteria for convergence. So even if you requested, let's say, 10,000 iterations, when the continuity residual or any of these velocity residuals or uh, k or epsilon, if any of those reached their absolute criteria for convergence, uh, the fluent would stop calculating. So I like to disable all of these, or you can just say, I want a more accurate solution. So you would add, let's say two zeros here or something like that. But I like to judge my own convergence. So I just click none here and it gets rid of all of them. It's the same effect as if you unticked all of them, but instead of doing that, you can just say none. Uh, the left side is just do we want it displayed in the graph and we do want all of those displayed so 
that's it print to console plot and it will plot with the, plot all of them in the first window and everything else is okay click okay statistics just skip that nothing important there uh, and this is where you define your drag monitor okay this will be the the convergence graph for for the drag on the vehicle so first of all you would select your zone which is the AMED body we only care about the about the, the, the drag coefficient on our car we do not care about the road so click only that one we want it print to console which means it will be printing it here it will just keep saying the the CD values and you can see the numbers which is kind of neat we want it plotted and we want to write the history of all of the coefficient of drags for maybe uh, looking at it later in Excel or uh, comparing to another convergence history and I just like to add a TXT here so it will be automatically openable in notepad and we can skip all of that right click open with and blah 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 and you want to specify the force vector so this means in which direction is our drag coming so in real life this car would be moving towards the left in the positive Z direction under its own power and the air would be resisting or providing drag in the opposite direction okay and uh, the, the vehicle is traveling at uh, at a constant velocity when these two forces on it are in equilibrium so we want to have our drag force in the negative z direction which would mean a minus one here and a zero here okay and click okay same for lift edit you would pick your body print plot right txt and our lift actually is in the y direction which is our little green arrow here okay uh, so that's okay next the moment uh, on the body print plot right dot txt and then you would specify a moment center okay and for example that can be either a zero 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 and then the moment axis would be our x equals one which means we are looking for a moment around the x-axis so that would mean the car kind of uh, being uh, rotated about the x-axis in the in the right hand rule principle if you know what that is which means basically you put your thumb uh, you put your thumb in the positive x direction and then curl or all of your fingers around the x-axis which would mean the car is actually kind of lifting the rear and um, press, pressing in the, the front into the ground and that is basically what happens with all of the all of the vehicles that that are traveling today unless they are fitted with uh, wings and uh, active uh, underbodies and stuff like that uh, but for example i would like to specify a moment center to be in our center of gravity because all of the forces are reduced basically to a center of gravity and then we have um, a polar moment of inertia and stuff like that for um, for the description of all, all of the forces that are acting on the body and um, I'm just going to open our AMED body in SOLIDWORKS and you would go maybe under tools and mass properties okay and it would show you the center of mass for this body which is kind of a, a full solid body to be at y of 190 millimeters so it means 190 millimeters up and 52584 forward this is because we, we have specified our origin to be at the rear of the car so 525 here which would mean around half of the car okay so i'm going to specify this for for the for the center okay so y would be 0. 0.19005 and 0.5584 okay and the moment x is is just a it's a unit vector it's basically a vector with a length of one so you do not need to enter another point here which would let's say be at the same y and z okay same values would be here and then the x would be one or five or ten or it would not matter it could be infinity so just enter one for this and basically all of that is correct and click OK. Uh, next thing you could do is for example specify another monitor 
so you can know when your solution is is converged uh, you could put a point or, or a vertex uh, in the wake of the car and basically we're expecting uh, we are expecting some vortexes there which would be kind of rotating and uh, lifting the air around and we would like to specify a vertex there so you would create a new point okay and you would say for example uh, at the x of let's say 0 0.1 we don't want it to be on the on the symmetry plane because since it's a it's a no shear wall the symmetry plane has an effect of kind of calming the flow in that area down so 0 0.1 would mean around half of our remaining width of the body at the y we want it let's say 50 millimeters is the height of the leg so again 0 0.1 and at the z we actually want it yeah let's say minus 0 0.1 this would mean uh, 10 centimeters behind the car and when you have filled all of these out you would click a point tool here and it will create the point where it actually is okay and then you can see it will be in the rear of our car which is kind of in a perfect position already so uh, that is decent and we can name this point wake okay and click create close and then you would like to report a vertex average so it will report an average velocity or average pressure in that vertex okay vertex average of let's say velocity velocity magnitude and select the point wake and we want this plotted in the next window and you can write it or not i don't think there that is necessary uh, and you can say we want to get get data on the on the x-axis you you want it every iteration if you were using a transient simulation you would use either a time step or a specific flow time flow time so one iteration and get it every one iteration so all of that is okay we can rename it to our wake velocity and click okay okay that's on our monitor and that's plenty of ways to monitor if your solution is converged uh, next thing is the solution initialization uh, this just means that we have to provide some initial value for fluent uh, from which it can start iterating because it's an iterative process uh, in the end so uh, i'm just going to show you these two because um, they are the, the easiest here to, to pick and there there is a full multigrid um, initialization in the textual commands and but it's not necessary for a case as simple as this so first we go with the standard okay we're going to say comp compute from velocity inlet with absolute and it's going to fill the entire field with this velocity and these values for turbulent kinetic energy and dissipation rate it has reached all of these based on the on the velocity inlet and uh, mesh size and uh, domain size and stuff like that so i'm going to click initialize and it's done when when the patch button appears here and now i'm just going to show you without explaining what it what that actually did okay and symmetry and 100 display okay and now you see it has filled the whole domain with a velocity of 40 meters per second. So every cell is 40 meters per second. You can check the value by, by right clicking your mouse anywhere. And this prints out the value. Okay. Uh, so this is not really ideal. There is a much better way. And now I'm going to show you that. And from now on, you should use probably only that all of the time. Okay. So initialization hybrid. And there is more settings here, but the default ones are perfectly fine. And you would say initialize. It will ask you uh, to discard the data that has already been done, which is basically only the initialization. And you would click yes. And then it would do uh, 10 quick iterations with a laminar, uh, laminar model, which is a one equation model. And um, it will not, not predict anything uh, very accurately but it will fill the domain with uh, with a more uh, realistic distribution of pressure and velocity from which it can start iterating and that can save you up to 50 iterations later on and these 10 take a really not that uh, not that uh, 
larger amount of time.